Every season of Survivor is a story. There are our main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story that has you rooting for someone and against someone else in hopes that it all ends in a satisfying conclusion. Each story that we're going to look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end from the time they're introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. Now, for reference, we're only going to be observing what the TV show is showing us and what stories being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea about what happens in those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And now with that, 39 days, 20 people, one survivor. Here we go, mere months after everyone saw JT Thomas pull off the first ever perfect game in Survivor history, he is back for season 20, Survivor Heroes versus Villains. This is happening in Samoa for the second time ever in the show's history, and this is the first full-blown all-returning season since season eight All-Stars, and yeah, that means it's been a while. All-Stars didn't go so great, but this time it should be better should be we have 20 top tier players split onto two tribes so of course let's meet up with jt the heroes are definitely people i would rather play the game with the villains are the people i've always been against so this is perfect for me to be on the hero side and battle it out against these punks i don't like anyway i'm a villain i think villains are smarter than heroes because they don't mind stabbing somebody in the back to get where they want to get it's a fact it's a proven fact google it my tribe the heroes tribe and they're hard working they you know tough guys good people and i was like you know this is it i can't wait to keep some ass out here i showed russell hans side by side with jt because he's kind of the quintessential villain even though no one here has seen him play on his original season yet since it was only filmed a few weeks prior to this one i also need to mention that coach and tyson are back from token chains as well but they're on the villains tribe so they'll only come up if they're relevant could you imagine though if the dragon slayer was labeled as a hero i would find that funny anyways everyone flies in on their choppers to the beach and right away a few villains say hey i feel unfairly labeled why am i a villain with boston rob saying the difference between a hero and a villain is really just perspective when it comes to survivor and tom westman chimes in and says some people this season may change lanes some heroes may become villains some villains may become heroes we shall see. Though I truly doubt JT's gonna switch since he just called the villains a bunch of punks. We then have an epic reward challenge where Stephanie LaGrosa pops out her shoulder only to pop it back in herself. What a boss. Rupert breaks his toe and says, I'm staying in. And Sandra rips off Sugar's top. It's amazing. And in the process, JT does score a point for the heroes and they ultimately win the reward challenge. Upon arriving at their camp, JT talks to James immediately and says, us Physical threats need to band together and avoid the women dominating like they did in Micronesia. But then JT says that unlike last time, he is more willing to turn on his alliances if he needs to, especially with James, which then leads into this conversation with Tom. If I were to get that far in the game and were to face a jury, I want somebody else who won the million dollars sitting next to me. Yeah. So, uh, you know, seeing you right away. I will, you know, you want to make some kind of an oath, whatever. I, you and I need each other at the finals because we both won the money. They have to choose one. If else. anyone goes, if either one of us, no matter how good a game we play, goes up against someone who didn't win, we lose. It's a good plan. All right. People are expecting me to be that guy they saw in Token Chains, you know, that guy who's stuck by his word and done everything he had to do. But this game is completely different because everyone's already seen me play to win this game a survivor you have to have a dark side somewhere you have to be willing to sacrifice some of your integrity to make it far in this game and i'm not yes, looking to save my hero name i'm here to do what i have to do to win this game so it's going to be a whole different ball game for me Wow, without Steven Fishback here, JT is going full villain. I mean, he did just pull off the best game possible statistically as a hero, so I guess why not try to win as a villain? What would be the point of winning twice as a hero? Well, I mean, another million, but that's neither here nor there. My question is, does JT even have it in him to go full villain? Well, we see America's favorite player, Rupert, struggle to make fire, and the golden boy, JT, gets it done in no time. 
He then kills a chicken by spinning it by its head. And James recalls how this happened one time when he was a child, his grandma spun a chicken by its head. And uh, it was very traumatic, but in retrospect, it's kind of funny. But all the fun and games are shoved to the side when the heroes lose the immunity challenge on a puzzle and back at camp. Tom, Steph, and JT are all worried about Sari. She dominated both seasons she played in and came up just shy both times. Personally, I would also be worried about Amanda, but I think because I saw Amanda lose both times legitimately at the end, Sari's the bigger threat. But ultimately, the easy decision for the tribe at this vote is Sugar since no one's connected with her and she is a challenge liability and she is annoying Colby. So at Tribal Council, Sugar, the tribe has spoken. That is it for the premiere and straight up, I'm not sure if JT can pull off being a villain, but I'm looking forward to seeing him try as he's been a prominent figure of the heroes so far. By the way, do you like the content I make? Well, if you want to pick what I cover for videos and watch everything up to six months early, then consider joining my Once Upon an Island Patreon. You can cancel at any time and there's a 15% discount if you do sign up for one year. Thank you for your support. Episode 2 sees JT being designated as the challenge leader by the tribe. They're like, hey, this next challenge, JT's done it before and he's won, so let's let him lead us. They all say, JT, we're going to listen to you. So it's incredibly frustrating when they don't listen to him. And it seems like, from my observation, that Tom, Colby, and Stephanie give bad directions that goes against what JT said to do. And James yells at Stephanie, you just shut up. They, of course, lose immunity due to JT letting others take the lead from him. And back at camp, James completely flips out and says, I haven't lost this much in my entire life. I mean, it's been two losses. So this reaction is a bit extreme, it seems like. But then James isn't done. By using only information he learned from Steph's first season and ignoring her second time playing, he paints the target on her. Her team don't ever win. Think about it. She's, she's made it to the end by herself. She was the only person left on our entire tribe. You mean to tell me that's good luck? Obviously not. After tonight, I'm in one alliance in this game. I can either go with James, Rupert, and Amanda, and bring Sari and Candace along, or I can go with Kobe, Tom, Stephanie, and bring Candace and Sari along. So, one thing that I do know, I'm gonna piss a few people off. Steph, the tribe has spoken. Give some advice. Next time y'all lose a challenge, a little less cursing off your tribe might help. Keep your mouth shut. Oh, come on. And Steph is gone. Even though she was better in Guatemala, which we completely ignored when talking about how bad she is, Steph has never been that great in challenges, despite how fit she is. Back at camp, JT apologizes to Tom for voting Steph out, and Tom says, maybe JT's being legit, but I don't know. The next day, JT talks to Candace, who reveals she's a lot smarter than he initially thought based on what he saw of her in Cook Islands, and goes, whoa. Candace has got to go right now. I thought she would be a pushover. So he talks to Suri and... Hard to trust anyone out here right now. Mm, tell but me about it. Candace says she don't fucking trust you. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm nervous now. About what? About us. You're nervous about me and you? Yeah. Why? What? I hear, hear stuff. Tell me what you hear. That you don't trust me and... Who said that? I'm thinking, where did that come from? Because I have never said that. Either somebody is trying to make sure that she and I don't trust each other, or I'm thinking there's something weird going on. A bold face lie just to put the target on Candace's back, no other reason. And Sari won't tell Candace, and in fact, Candace never finds out, at least not that we see. So now it's time for immunity, and can the heroes turn around their fortune? Survivor's ready. Go! Danielle going hard against Amanda. Now Amanda has Danielle on the run. Colby goes 
finally they win an immunity challenge it took them long enough but don't get too excited because if you think about it both challenges they've won were purely physical nothing that had to do with puzzles or really anything else and in episode four they lose reward thanks to colby Thanks, Colby. And back at camp, they discover a piece of paper in their coffee reward that they got in episode three when they won immunity that says, hey, there's an idol somewhere in this camp. Go find it. As it turns out, Tom finds it and Amanda catches him in the act and she tells JT. Well, in reality, she tells everyone his idol is not a secret at all. The heroes go on to lose immunity again and back at camp, JT is on the warpath, this time to get rid of Suri. That is until... Unbelievable! Yeah. All of a sudden now we want to get Candace. It's crazy. Siri is right. Siri is right. At this point, if you need to get your idol, I get it because I ain't got any control anymore. Siri's mastermind behind this whole deal. Siri should be the one going home or not. Tomorrow we make our apologies, tonight we make our move. I've got to make a big decision, a very big decision. I've seen Siri operate, I know how she plays. And it won't be long before she gets rid of someone like me. It's all up to me. I know where everybody over here is voting. I mean, why get rid of Candace, who has no real proven track record of success when Suri is sitting right there on a silver platter? Suri's not good in challenges, and she's a social beast. Get her to the merge, and she's probably going to reach the end, which is not a benefit to JT's game. But turning on the people he aligned with would make many of them mad. What to do, what to do. So, at Tribal Council... I read the votes. Thank you. This is indeed a hidden immunity idol. Any votes cast for Tom will not count. First vote. Tom does not count. Tom does not count. Tom does not count. Colby. That's one vote, Colby. Colby. Suri. Suri. Fourth person voted out of Survivor Heroes vs. Villains. Suri. Three, the tribe has spoken. In case you're wondering what JT is going to do any chance he gets this season, it's going to be to swing for the fences. You've heard in many, many videos how annoyed I get when people just sit on their hands. In this season, JT's doing the opposite. Any chance he gets, he's not sitting on his hands, which is going to be fun for us. I don't know if it'll be good for JT, but it'll be fun for us. Back at camp, Colby says, wow, JT really proved himself as a hero tonight, siding with me. But then JT lies to everyone else and says he didn't decide on what to do until tribal, where he realized Suri would flip on them all. I mean, that's a load of crap. And Rupert's angry with JT, and honestly, it is all a matter of perspective like Boston Rob said. Are you on Colby's side? Because then JT's a hero. Or are you on Rupert's side? Because now JT is a villain. Well, JT then talks to Amanda, and... They think I saved them. I didn't. I got really serene when I had a chance. And I swear, I will never, never turn on you guys. Never. Really? I swear, I swear, Amanda, I would never lie to you, I swear. You don't believe me? JT, you can tell me everything he wants to tell me, and I see right through him. In the back of my mind, I know that he will lie, and he makes alliances like they're, you know, yesterday's news. I think he's made 20 alliances already. If he wants to play this game, game on. Bring it on. JT thinks his gameplay doesn't stink, but everyone is smelling the nastiness of it. We then go to the reward challenge, where Jeff says, you are all playing for chocolate. Go ahead, have a taste. I want you to taste the chocolate that you're playing for. And no one on the heroes eats any of it. And in fact, Colby gets pretty angry and says, Jeff, I'm ready to play right now. I don't want any of that chocolate. Hey, Jeff. Oh, wow. Colby, you have a look on your face like this is annoying or somehow insulting. I handed you the plate and you were like, I don't want this. I'm not annoyed with you. I'm ready to get to the challenge. Free offer of chocolate. I'm just curious. It. Let's go. I got the message, brother. We'll go when I'm ready. Heroes, you're sitting out one person. It has to be a man. I'll sit down. I'll sit down. Colby going to sit this one out for the heroes. So, of course, he sits out. Wait, what? During said reward challenge, James leaps for a rebound and ouch, he injures his leg badly. This challenge is called Smurgen Brawl, and it is brutal as last season it caused a medical evacuation. Yeah, both times it has appeared, it has caused some serious damage. They end up losing the challenge and back at camp, James is wrapped up so much that I am surprised he wasn't just pulled out of the game and sent to a hospital for x-rays. But unless it's life or death, they're not going to pull you from the game, it is your choice. With the Heroes Tribe now down, their biggest member, they lose immunity. And so far, they have only won two out of eight challenges so far, and as I said earlier, they were both very physical challenges, and now their biggest man is out, so 
Can they win those if they come up again? I don't know. Back at camp, Rupert says James being broken is still better in challenges and stronger than Tom. I mean, come on, let's be real. Rupert's talking out of his butt. Tom is infamous as the challenge beast. He won five individual immunity challenges his first season, and his tribe went on to win every single immunity challenge. Tom is no slouch. So my question is, is Rupert high? Just be honest and say you're aligned with James over Tom. Don't act like James being broken is better in challenges than the healthy challenge beast Tom Westman because it's not true. Even Candace is like, yeah, this is so dumb. We're making a mistake. JT then ponders this idea. Logically, I should vote out James tonight, but if I were to try anything snaky again, I'm around Rupert, James, and Amanda. That would put myself in a, in a bad spot. I hope to hear. That was good. JT cannot cross us. This is so stupid because JT didn't vote with us last Trouble Council, but I'm really depending on his vote tonight. Because if he doesn't vote with us, that means he's voting with Tom, Colby, and Candace against James. We're going to another Tribal Council, and most everybody's looking to JT for a vote. And the reason for that is because JT is so wishy-washy. JT flip-flops at every opportunity that he has, you know, because he's clearly just playing the hand that suits him today. Personally, I think James should go. Tom has a proven track record of winning challenges in Palau, and James has now been severely injured in two of his three seasons. Maybe if he were good at puzzles, he should be kept over Tom, but yeah, James isn't that great at those. We've never seen him be dominant at those either. But it's not my call, as JT decides he is voting Tom out, so he lies to Tom and says, oh no, I'm not voting you off. And then he lies to Colby, who says JT is not dependable, as he flip-flops constantly. So we go to Tribal Council, where everyone votes, and... First vote. Tom. James. Tom. Two votes, Tom. James. That's two votes, Tom. Two votes, James. Tom. Fifth person voted out of Survivor Heroes versus Villains. Tom. That's fourth enough. Tom. The tribe has spoken. Wow. I mean, they deserve to lose another immunity challenge. Not that they're going to get the opportunity in this episode as the heroes are now down 9-6 to six to the villains, and we go to the reward challenge where Jeff says, no matter what, both tribes are going to tribal council. Both tribes are voting someone out. The villains win reward, and somehow James outperforms Colby, which is crazy. And back at camp, Colby says, hey guys, no worries, just vote me out, and let's have a nice afternoon. Wow, he's giving up just like that. Colby, the old challenge beast, has just given up. So talks happen amongst the remaining four, who are not Colby or James, and they're like, hey, who should we vote off? I mean, Colby's a good guy. I know. But even with James's leg, my foot, Colby was last. I'm just, I'm really shocked that Colby, he hasn't really pulled through in anything yet. You know, uh, but still, James is hurt. Even though, you know, we all had an alliance with James, but I mean, even James knows at this point we have to win. He definitely eats us our house home. He grabs four bananas on the way to the challenge and three more on the way back. He's a competitor, like, no matter what will happen, he will give his all until we win, but we do need him. But if you're giving your all and your knee blows out, our five has to be the strongest possible five we could have. And you can't steal any more bananas when we come to camp. Everybody eats bananas. Yeah, it's but so... when you get a banana, you get one for everyone else. It's like an etiquette. Are we seriously caring about banana etiquette right now? Is that even a big deal? Are we... Who cares about that? Though to prove that James is still physically fit enough to stay, he has a foot race with JT where he loses while JT is running backwards. I am not sure what this proves, but either way, we go to Tribal Council where everyone decides, yeah, James needs to go, and he's voted off five to one. James, Tribal Spoiler. Yes, Can the heroes get their act together? That's what I want to know heading into episode seven. Somehow JT has survived despite going full wishy-washy villain, but that can't last forever, can it? The heroes need to bond and make it to the merge without losing anyone else because it doesn't seem like there will be a tribe swap at all because if it were to happen, I think it would have happened by now. JT says the heroes are five strong and it's finally time for some redemption. They win the reward challenge and with that reward comes yet another clue. JT says, hey, with this clue, all of us are gonna go out and look for that idol, and we're gonna use it together as a tribe against the villains. Everyone agrees, and things are really turning around as at the immunity challenge. JT and Amanda working together for the hero. Big immunity on the line. Heroes lose, they will be down to four tribe members left in this game. 
Heroes only a few pieces away. Yeah! Heroes win immunity! Yeah! Episode 8 begins, and remember what JT just said in the prior episode about finding the idol as a tribe and being a team with it. I say to remember that because, uh, yeah, he's out looking for it, solo, by himself, and... What's everyone disappearing to? Oh, man. Oh, that's it. I just found it. You just found it now? Let's get out of here. I just found it. I just found it. I walked up, picked up my long walk. Yeah. Five minutes. Can I see it? Yeah. The first one of us that needs this after the murder, we use it. It's a beautiful thing. Yep. And we take them down with it. Nice work, brother. JT found the Hidden Immunity Idol, which is not so great in my book because JT is the slimiest guy out here. He's running the tribe. He's got a little best friend interest with everybody. In every vote, he's been the one that's going back and forth and everybody's coming to him trying to figure out which way is JT gonna go. And nobody calls him out. It would be in Amanda's best interest to work with me to get rid of him and the idol or to get rid of the idol. Either way, JT is dangerous. He got caught. Amanda seems to have a nose for when someone is looking for an idol this season because she has found out both people right away as they're finding the idol we then go to the reward challenge where uh the villains have packed up their camp and brought it with them is it already time for a merge because tree mail didn't seem to indicate there was a merge so what's going on well as jeff reveals everybody drop your <laughs> expectations we are not merging. Yeah, the villains are just dumb, I guess. However, the heroes notice the men on the villains tribe are being systematically eliminated. If Coach or Russell goes out next, then it seems like Micronesia 2.0 is in full effect. The heroes do win reward, and while eating their pizza feast, JT says, it is so obvious how the women are running things on the villain's side. We can only hope that Amanda doesn't flip to them if that's true come the merge. So we go to the immunity challenge, where it's all up to Colby and JT. This is not even close. JT and Colby, score for the heroes. Heroes win immunity. We move on to episode nine and the heroes can't stop thinking about whether a man was voted out again, because if a man is voted off, well, they might have to do something drastic. So upon arriving at the reward challenge. Rupert, what's the reaction to seeing its coach that is now gone from the game? Cannot believe Coach is gone, you know, but that Women's Alliance looks very strong. It's kind of obvious. JT, obvious to you guys, it's a Women's Alliance. I would have bet my life Russell or Coach One was going to be gone. I mean, only Russell is left. It sure seems that way, but you can never be 100% positive. But hey, I mean, they did it once. Why can't the women do it again? And let's remember, this season, JT is not sitting on his hands. He was the chosen one. Maybe he still is. He had the first ever perfect game in Survivor history. Things always seem to swing his way at the end of the day, and no one has seen Russell's first season of Survivor yet. So he mouths to Russell during the challenge, hang in there, and Russell looks grateful to have a friend on the other side. Now the heroes do lose reward at no fault to JT, and back at camp, JT has a plan so crazy, so insane, it just might work. I got a plan. Uh-oh, JT you got a plan. Russell knows he's going next. I give him a hidden immunity idol. He votes out Parvati. Bam. Parvati's gone. And then just pick the girls off. Pick them off like sitting ducks and then vote Russell's ass out six. You writing your letter to Russell, buddy? Yeah. Russell, this is a huge turning point in this game. Just by competing against you and the few handshakes we've had, I feel like I can trust you. We will most likely merge with 10 people and then you will be completely safe with us. Our five plus you will remain strong till the girls are done with. This is your chance to show you're not a villain. I'll put that at the end right here. Good. I think it's really crazy to give Russell the idol. You don't know what's going on over there. He could be in with the girls for all we know. Gosh, this is survivor history. Oh my gosh. If we win, I'm gonna try to give Russell my hidden immunity idol. Based on me guessing that he's on the outs, which I really feel like he is. All right, this is our chance. That'll give us the numbers going into the merge. I mean, this is insanely risky. This is a big move. If the villains go to tribal, both tribes are still evened up five to five, even if Russell goes, and they can use JT's idol at the merge. But again, Amanda could flip, especially if the women really are running things 
then this could turn the tide and give the heroes a 6-4 to four advantage. After all, the other villainous men were goofs like Coach, Tyson, and Randy. What does a villain label really mean anyways? So the heroes do win immunity, but here's what happened during said challenge and right afterwards. Oh, when the challenge is over, you go to JT, okay? He's gonna give you something. Why do you get for the obstacle? Use it tonight. Protect yourself. Get rid of one of them. Come on board with us, okay? Okay? Good. Get rid of her ass. Wish I could take you home. Damn, we did it. And we got the idol out to Russell. I have to label that as dumb no matter what. Giving away your idol to an unknown person is dumb even if it ends up working out at the end of the day. But holy crap, imagine if this does work. Imagine if JT is right and the women are running things and Russell does play that idol and they do eliminate Parvati. That would be huge. Back at camp, the heroes are excited by the prospect, but it is now day 25 and we are so badly needing a merge is what they say, which finally happens. And when the villains arrive at the heroes camp, he sees Russell, which is great, but then he sees Parvati. What? This is baffling. How are both Parvati and Russell here? Unless, oh, duh, of course. JT figures out that obviously they both must have played an idol, and that's why Courtney's voted out instead. So he talks to Russell and. You know, it's the first time I've been comfortable since day four. I'm myself. This is where I stand. This is it for me. So don't even have I don't any doubt. doubt. I don't doubt. Don't you. have any. Don't even worry. Where am I kidding that I am on board with y'all? Giving Russell the hidden immunity out of could blow up in my face. I mean, he could have never been going home. You know, he could be the leader of the girls over there. Do I believe it? Not a chance in the world. So, I mean, I trust him explicitly. Hook, line, and sinker. They're biting everything I tell them. This is going to be way easier than I thought. Um, so I've been kind of hiding a secret from you. You see, these story videos are always from the perspective of the one player they're about. So showing other people's perspectives is usually not important, especially not if they're on the other camp or tribe, because it either ruins a surprise or it literally doesn't matter. But in this case, I think it is absolutely crucial we rewind back to episode 9, as here's what happened right after JT gave Russell the idol at the challenge. I don't even have to find idols. People are actually giving me idols. You don't hand the enemy the idol, especially when his name is Russell Hands. You don't do that. That's a no-no. Play the idol tonight. For sure. To save yourself. Save myself. Because clearly, you're on the outside of an all-devouring female alliance. Right. I put that part in myself. I can't believe he's writing all this. Place. He's telling me what to do. He's, he's giving me pointers. How do you give the idol king an idol? Here, Mr. Russell, here's an idol. This one's just for you. Well, thank you. You know what? I think JT just handed me one million dollars. Hey, I guess he can afford it. Hopefully I can trust you and you're not truly a villain. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Let's do this together. See you soon. BFF forever. <laughs> XOXO, JT. Destroy this right when you finish reading. <laughs> JT gave Russell his heart today. And Russell is just gonna stab it a million times, <laughs> a million times over, and hand it to me, and I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> Not since Eric Reichenbach in Micronesia have we seen something so insane. Isn't it weird that by trying to avoid Micronesia 2.0, JT is now causing it? And Parvati has evolved both times. Wild. Just wild. Russell, Parvati, and Daniel DiLorenzo are the power three of the Villains Alliance. Since the villains moved into this hero's camp, they are now eating everything, which annoys the heroes to no end. But after a quick chat with Sandra, Rupert talks to JT and Candace and says, hey, Sandra told me that you can't trust Russell. But JT says, I refuse to believe this. Russell's a good old boy. We can trust him. And of course, Sandra would say something like that. She's a villain. Parvati wouldn't be in this game if she didn't play her idol. No question asked. I, I don't think so that. either. Rupert. <laughs> There's a reason that I've been doing Rupert's strategical play for him thus far. It's because he needs to be told where to vote by someone he can really trust and let that be done. So I just keep reminding him of that. Like, Rupert, think about this a minute. Do you believe what Sandra told you 
or do you believe the obvious truth? I mean, at the immunity challenge, Daniel wins, but only because Parvati let her. Huh? Weird. If Parvati thought that she had a chance of being voted off, why did she give up so easily? JT says this is a bit suspicious. Parvati might have another idol. So we need to vote for someone other than Parvati tonight. Back at camp, they debate. Should we vote off Jerry? Should we vote off Sandra? Both seem like good options, but Jerry is probably better in challenges, so we'll target Jerry. We don't think anyone will play an idol for her. But then Amanda, poor sweet Amanda, tries to tell Parvati to play her idol tonight for herself, but uh, Parvati can see right through this and knows it's a trick. So at Tribal Council, You know what, Jack? Sandra, not for you. Get out of here, for real. <laughs> Jerry, that one's for you too. Damn it. Thanks, Jerry. Sandra, these are both hidden immunity idols. Any votes cast for Sandra or Jerry will not count. Jerry does 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 not count. JT. JT, that's two votes, JT. 11th person voted out and the third member of our jury. JT. JT, try to spoken. I feel like a total idiot right now. This is probably one of the biggest moves in Survivor history and it did not go in my favor. It's pretty terrible to be voted out by your own idol. You know, I made a big move. You gotta make moves to win this game and I knew that. I know that people are villains for a reason. Don't ever trust them. In a rare move for a solo story video, I want to do a quick epilogue because Courtney, Coach, and JT do something on Ponderosa so epic it can't be ignored. They form a rock band of which they made six songs using whatever they can find around Ponderosa and that results in them creating The Dragons, which has six songs and one music video. Here is that music video. <laughs> So let's break this down. How is JT Thomas as a character? JT was clearly coming off a high, being heralded as the chosen one who played an amazing, statistically perfect game his last season as America's hero. 
they decided why not go full villain. It sounded fun and in many ways it was fun for us to watch. JT never sat on his hands and seemed to be the crucial piece of the hero's tribe. And while he was obviously not a villain as a person like Russell Hans, his strategy certainly was. And while it did eliminate some fan favorites early, it was not the reason he lost. Out of 19 character moments shown on the show, Eight were heroic and 11 were villainous, making JT Thomas a villain character on Survivor Heroes vs. Villains. Now how is JT Thomas as a strategist? It seemed like for every smart move he made, he would make an equally dumb one. People have long theorized, what if Steven Fishback was there to help him? And I wonder, would Steven have made JT play a bit smarter game? I don't think he would have let JT give the idol to Russell, but hey, that just ruins the fun. I mean, all anyone remembers from the season about JT is the Russell idol move. But in reality, JT was the leader of the heroes and he had set them up to be where they were. At one point, they were down by three and they got right back into it. They evened up the numbers and they could have run the entire post-merge game. Unfortunately, he took a risk far too large by handing an unknown player an idol that Really? That's all anyone remembers about this season when it comes to him. And no one remembers how JT ran this tribe all pre-merge and seemed poised to go to the final three with Colby and Rupert and possibly win if things went his way at the merge vote. Out of 31 strategic moments shown on the show, 16 were smart and 15 were dumb, making JT Thomas a smart strategist on Survivor Heroes vs. Villains. Thank you for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.